Hi to all the nursing aspirants. I am Navkiran and I welcome you all to my channel Navkiran's Nursing Classes. Friends, today I am here to discuss a very important topic with all of you. Be it CPNRE, be it NCLEX or any entrance exam related to nursing you are going for this year. I am going to discuss a topic which will be there in your entrance exam and that topic is called as gestational diabetes mellitus. Now why I am saying that this topic is very very important because from the recent years it has been observed that an, an increased number of women are suffering from gestational diabetes mellitus. So the examiners are also taking this topic into the exams so that the upcoming nurses should have a thorough knowledge about gestational diabetes mellitus. So let us start today's topic. Before we start today's video, I just want to request you all if you are watching my channel Navkiran's Nursing Classes for the first time, kindly subscribe my channel. By subscribing, you will get notifications about the upcoming useful videos for nurses and nursing profession. So friends, let us start today's video and I am going to discuss gestational diabetes mellitus with all of you. Now what is gestational diabetes mellitus? As the word indicates, gestational indicates related to pregnancy and diabetes mellitus, every nurse knows what it is. So basically, it's Diabetes is when your body is not able to control or to regulate the normal amounts of glucose in the blood either due to absolute or relative deficiency of insulin. So how it is related to pregnancy? See pregnancy puts, um, you know, um, it, it fluctuates the value of insulin in your body since pregnancy hormones are working in the body of the mother. The insulin demands increases or decreases in the various trimesters. For example, in the first trimester, the need for insulin decreases. In the second and third trimester, the need for insulin increases. So basically what happens? Why the insulin need increases? So this exactly explains why there is gestational diabetes mellitus. So basically what happens in gestational diabetes mellitus, it is called so when the mother is not diabetic before getting pregnant after pregnancy or during pregnancy I mean to say uh, in between 24 to 28 weeks of gestation she suddenly de develops diabetes. So basically what happens there are pregnancy hormones and they are helping in maintaining pregnancy. So these hormones they just create an insulin resistant state in your cells. So you know your body feels like more demand for insulin and sometimes the pregnant mother's pancreas is not able to produce that much insulin. I am talking about second and third trimesters and this leads to gestational diabetes mellitus. Now this thing explains why GTT that is glucose tolerance test is done at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation because usually diabetes mellitus will occur during these weeks. Now there is very important point to be noted here please note one thing maternal glucose crosses placenta but maternal insulin does not. That means if mother's body is producing less amount of insulin, only mother's blood glucose level will be higher. And this will lead to the passage of more and more glucose through placenta into the fetal circulation and hence it will result in the big fetus. And this is further causing a lot of complications in pregnancy. So basically, who are the you know mothers who are at the most risk at most risk to get gestational diabetes mellitus so let us talk about the risk factors the first risk factor is when mother's age is more than 35 years the second risk factor is when mother is having any history of diabetes mellitus the third thing is when mother is suffering from preeclampsia or hypertension during pregnancy Another risk factor is multiple gestation. In addition to that, if somebody is having large than gestational age fetus. So all these factors could contribute to gestational diabetes mellitus. Now let us see what are the signs and symptoms of gestational diabetes mellitus. Most of the signs and symptoms are uh, like of normal diabetes mellitus. Like we discussed three P's in diabetes mellitus. 
polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. In addition to that, there could be weight loss. And there is one very important thing that happens in the pregnant lady and that's polyhydraminose. That means a lot of amniotic fluid. So she is usually having a big abdomen. Large for gestational age fetus. The fetus is usually huge as I already have told you the reason for this. And in addition to that, there is very important sign. Most of the time, this woman will suffer from UTI. Yes, urinary tract infection. And why this is happening? Because the urine which she is passing is full of glucose. And this glucose is enhancing or, you know, it is supporting the growth of UTI causing microorganisms. So the woman will uh, like continuously present into the, into the clinical area with UTI symptoms and yeast infections. In addition to that, there will be glucose urea and it could be converted into ketone urea if this diabetes becomes very severe. So what are the treatment options which we can choose in a client with gestational diabetes mellitus? And here nurses, health education plays a very vital role. Now how before this, uh, you know, health education, let us discuss its diagnostic test. So GTT, glucose tolerance test is one of the most reliable test done during pregnancy to detect gestational diabetes mellitus. This GTT is done between 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. This is a three hour oral glucose testing. So in this, the mother is given 75 or 100 gram of glucose and then her blood samples are withdrawn every hour three times in order to check blood glucose level. So this indicates whether the mother is suffering from diabetes or not. Now what, has, what is the treatment? See, the mother who is suffering from gestational diabetes mellitus is first managed with the diet and exercise. But if diet and exercise is not working properly and still the blood glucose level is continuously high, then we have to switch the mother to insulin. Now, insulin is a natural hormone and as I have already told you, insulin does not cross placenta. So, insulin is a treatment of choice in the diabetic mother. Oral hypoglycemic agents are never given to the mother. This is a red alert point because oral hypoglycemic agents could be teratogens or these they may cause some problems in the fetus. So they are never been the drug of choice. Now during delivery you have to take care of the mother a lot because during delivery sometimes the mother is not eating anything or she is exhausted she is losing a lot of energy. So she might suffer from hypoglycemia. Now this could be very, very serious since hypoglycemia is called as a silent killer. So as a nurse, we have to assess the blood glucose level of the client every hour during labor. And according to that, according to that blood glucose level, we have to adjust the amount of insulin. After delivery, we have to take care of the mother as well as the newborn. The newborn, might suffer from a lot of complications. The biggest complication is hypoglycemia. Let me tell you something about it, like how this occurs, how hypoglycemia is the biggest concern in the newborn of diabetic mother. First of all, the fetus is very big because of its big size, it needs more glucose. The second thing is, um, you know, it has uh, been continuously taking a lot of glucose from the mother. So he, his pancreas is producing a lot of insulin according to the amount of glucose which he is taking from, from the pregnancy time, right? And now suddenly his glucose supply is cut off after delivery and suddenly his body will go into hypoglycemia. So as a nurse, the most important thing is to assess the newborn for hypoglycemia and for this thing, we have to take the blood glucose sample of the newborn. And immediately the newborn should be given milk or, you know, if required dextrose solution in order to maintain blood glucose level. And the mother should be taken care of hypoglycemia as well as hyperglycemia. Usually after delivery, after the removal of placenta, as the pregnancy hormones are going down, most of the mothers will return to the euglycemic state. The euglycemia means the pre-pregnancy non-diabetic state. But some of the mothers may permanently develop gestational uh, this diabetes mellitus. Okay, 
so we have to assess the mother and we have to adjust the amount of insulin especially in the first 24 hour according to the blood glucose level of the mother so this is how and in addition to that you have to monitor the mother for postpartum hemorrhage and postpartum infection yes infection is the biggest concern because the mother's blood is full of glucose and the bacteria might get an opportunity to cause infections like endometritis etc so basically these are the major things that you need to take care of in a mother who is suffering from gestational diabetes mellitus i hope you enjoyed this topic and these are the things like you are going to get into your entrance exam and if you are very very clear about these things nobody can stop you to crack that entrance exam right so for these useful and informative videos on nursing and nursing profession kindly subscribe my channel if you like this video kindly share this video with your friends and your colleagues i'll just see you in the next informative video till then bye bye take care